Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. I've got another unboxing for you here, and this one's gonna be a real treat for me. This is Ice Age. This is my first expansion that I really fell in love with in the game of Magic. This is from 1995, and it's the 60 card starter deck. So this is gonna be a long video where this magic old timer talks about the past, this old set. Check the description to jump to the different chapters where I show different things. So this has 60 cards. It's not a playable deck. It's got lands and uh, cards, yes, but it's basically all the colors and it's just a little bit of everything of this brand new expansion, Ice Age. So the description here. It has been many centuries since the war between Urza and Mishra. The battered landscape has become a frozen desert, and the creatures of the world of Dominaria struggle for survival. One society has risen out of the cold chaos, defending itself against both brutal forces of nature and the attacks of nomadic tribes that have emerged in the surrounding wastelands. And through it all, a twisted necromancer flourishes in the deep winter, intent on using his power to keep the world dark and cold. You may have the skills to survive, but do you have the spirit to withstand the icy wilderness of Dominaria's Ice Age? You can play Ice Age by itself or as a standard expansion of Magic the Gathering. This was $8.95 back in the day, and in today's dollars, it'd be more like $14. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to be on the lookout for several valuable cards, and we'll take a nostalgia trip together. Check the description uh, to get some links and stuff. But basically, I'm going to be looking at mtg.donglare.com to determine the most valuable cards. So here's some that we're going to be on the lookout for. Necropotence, Brushland, Illusion of Grandeur, Attaker Wastes, Jester's Cap, Pox, and a Snow-Covered Mountain. So let's get to it. This has a little bit of foil here that we need to pop first, and then we get to the cards. That's it, no holding back. I really like the aesthetic of Ice Age. This box, I really remember it. I haven't opened one of these in over 20 years. I still have an original box, kind of beat up, so it's really cool to have an original uh, unopened one here. We've got an inner seal. There's a rule book right here, and then another silver foil. And then we get Word of Blasting. I think that the rare and uncommons are first, and then the commons, but I'll check that later. So let's open this one and see what cards we got. All right, Word of Blasting, one in a red, instant, bury target wall. Word of Blasting deals an amount of damage equal to that wall's casting cost to the wall's controller. That's pretty cool. So if the opponent's got some big old walls, we can destroy them, and the opponent loses that life. Walls? What walls? Jaya Ballard, Task Mage. A lot of great quotes from Jaya Ballard. And then the art by Ken Myers Jr. So obviously, black border set. There's the symbol, old card uh, border, the old card frame. Back in the day, there were no colored symbols, so we cannot tell if this is rare, uncommon, or common just by looking at it. And no, there were no mythics or foils. There's also no collector's number down at the bottom. So we have to look it up to see what's the valuable stuff. So again, probably these are the the uh, the rares and such. 
Dreams of the Dead, three and a blue enchantment, uh, then a one and a blue. Take target white or black creature from your graveyard and put it directly into play as though it were just summoned. That creature now requires an additional cumulative upkeep of two. If the creature leaves play, remove it from the game. Art by Heather Hudson. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, first of all, uh, the big idea is cumulative upkeep. This is an extinct mechanic, uh, which was basically you put an age counter on a card and every uh, upkeep you add a counter. Based on the number of counters, then you have to pay a cost. Here's two. So one turn after I cast this, I have to then pay two. Two turns, I pay four. The next turns, I pay six. And it goes on and on and it keeps uh, accumulating and eventually it's too much to cast and it's gone. So, uh, pretty interesting art here. Um, he's holding his corpsed up friend, but he's coming back to life. Pit Trap 2. This is an artifact. And then tap in 2. Sacrifice Pit Trap to bury target attacking creature without flying that is attacking you. These traps are truly a symbol of great cruelty and sinister cunning. Sorin, Re Relic Bane, Soldevi, Heretic, Anson Maddox. Uh, pretty high casting cost, uh, activation cost, and it's just a one-time use to destroy one creature. Hyperion, one and a white, summon Hyperion cannot be assigned to block a creature with power 3 or greater unless you pay an additional 1. That's a 1-3. Someone once said that Hyperions are the warriors that Aster are to Sky Knights. Don't believe it. General Yarkeld, the Arctic Fox, Damien Willock. This brings back so many memories. I had this card 20 years ago, and as you can see, these were Summon Hyperion. It doesn't say Creature Hyperion or uh, Creature Horse. Plus this quote by General Yarkeld, um, one of my favorite characters from this set. Hymn of Rebirth, uh, multicolored card, beautiful Richard Kane Ferguson art, my absolute favorite artist of all of magic, very painterly style. So this is three, and a white and a green sorcery uh, target. Take target creature from any graveyard and put it directly into play under your control as though it were just summoned. So steal an opponent's creatures from their graveyard. There will come soft rains, and spring shall be amongst us, a welcome friend. Halvor Aronson, Kildoran Priest. Justice. I have a vague memory of this card from 20 years ago when I was in college playing some of my uh, colleagues and someone cast this one and really decimated me. So two white white enchantment. During your upkeep pay white white or destroy justice. Whenever a red creature or spell deals damage, justice deals an equal amount of damage to the controller of that creature or spell. If another spell or effect reduces the amount of damage a red creature or spell deals, it does not reduce the amount of damage dealt by justice. So here is the red hate from a white enchantment. Ruth Thompson, artist, uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of Sephiroth from Final Fantasy. Yavimaya Nats, two and a green, summon insects. Flying for a zero one and regenerate for a green. It is our third day of travel on the Yavamaya River, and still these creatures plague us. Davin Lanson, our naturalist, has facetiously labeled them gnats, and the name has stuck. Disa the Restless journal entry. This I love this. I remember the flavor text from from Disa and her uh, journal entries as they travel through the Ice Age wastelands. Art by Dan Frazier. Leshrac's right. Oh, and here's Stuffy Doll, the classic little uh, stuffed doll that they used to use for a variety of art. So for one black, we get an enchant creature. Target creature gains Swamp Walk. 
Bind me to thee, my soul to thine. I am your servant and your slave. I shall hunger for your word and thirst for your blessing. Blood for blood, flesh for flesh, Leshrac, my lord. Limdul the necromancer. Again, the, the flavor text of this series is just seared into my mind. I remember Limdul. I remember all of these quotes. I remember this amazing evil necromancer that permeated this set. Art by Richard Thomas. War Chariot, artifact for three, and then a three and a tap. Target creature gains trample until end of turn. So a reusable trample, that's pretty cool. Pretty high cost though, you're playing six, or you're paying six mana to give a creature trample. A few um, uh, sets later we would have Rancor, which could be a reusable trample spell. I wouldn't advise using it with a woolly mammoth, but it's quite appropriate for many other beasts. Arkham Dagson, Sildevi Machinist. So I remember his quotes a lot. Damien Willich, art. Flooded Woodlands. This is a two, a blue, and a black enchantment. No green creature can attack unless its controller sacrifices a land whenever that creature attacks. Ooh, there's a lot of green hate right here. Could really lock down your opponent. Freyalise's tears bring life and renewal, though they also bring trouble. One of my other favorite artists, Kaja Foglio. She had a lot of great art in uh, the early magic sets. I don't think this one really represents some of her best art. I never had this one back in the day, however. But I really like her art. Musician. This one with the creepy guy in the, in the woods. Art by Drew Tucker. Two and a blue summon mage. Cumulative upkeep one. So you have to pay one next turn, then two next turn, then three. It just keeps adding up and uh, you, you're not going to keep this guy very long eventually. Tap. Put a music counter on target creature. During that creature's controller's upkeep, he or she pays one for each music counter on the creature or destroy the creature. So creature removal, very slow creature removal from blue. Stromgald Cabal. Wow, look at that art from Anson Maddox. One in a black black. Summon knights. Tap. Pay one life to counter target white spell. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. Play this ability as an interrupt. So back in the day we had interrupts, which were faster than instants. Nowadays an interrupt is an instant. So basically countering white spells uh, turn after turn uh, from black. Pretty cool. Keldor must be supreme at any cost. Avram Garrison, leader of the Knights of Stromgald. Really cool art. So freaky. Okay, so those were all probably the rares and the uncommons. I'll look it up properly later. Next comes the rule book. So back in the day, you could encompass all of the rules of magic in a handy little 72-page book that you can hold in the palm of your hand. And uh, basically, it explains the phases of the turn, basic spell casting, the features of a card... Oh, let's look at this. This is what the color philosophy was back in the day. Blue magic flows from the islands and thrives on mental energy. Other wizards fear the blue magician's ability with artifice and illusion, as well as their mastery of the elemental forces of air and water. Blue's traditional foils are red and green. So back in the day, it was really important uh, what was an aligned color and an enemy color. So the ones next to each other were friendly colors, and the ones far from each other were enemy colors. Uh, let's see one more. Uh, where's black? Black magic's power comes from the swamps and bogs. It thrives on death and decay. Many wizards shun black magic's self-destructive nature, even as they long for its ruthlessness. Black's traditional foils are green and white. So that's the evolution of the color pie. Um, this book here, uh, the magazine, The Duelist, this is the inside scoop of magic. 
Uh, six issues for seventeen ninety five. This should be a little video all by itself at some point. Back to the cards. Okay, so this is a somewhat playable deck because it has lands, but it's a multicolored five land deck, so not really playable. But anyway, let's look at these classic lands. Snow-covered swamp, old border. Uh, in the past, we had the activation of tap and you add black mana, and we had snow-covered swamps, which created effects for some of the cards in this new set. Nowadays, this is extinct. But check out that classic art. Doug Schuler, Mountain, Tom Wannerstrand, Plains, Christopher Rush, another beautiful swamp. So back in the day, I really liked the swamps and the mountains. I think this is one of the most valuable uh, lands from back in the day, the snow-covered mountain. Notice that even though there's snow in some, it, if it doesn't say snow-covered, it's not exactly snow-covered. It doesn't give you the boon that it may. This one really stands out in my memories. I, I thought it looked like ruins uh, in the mountains. There was a really fun island with Easter egg, or Easter Easter island statues. Let's see if we get one. I like that one a lot too. Really nice. This one uh, kind of made me think of like the moon for some reason. Forest. Got another of the valuable mountains. Island. I don't think I remember having very many of these back in the day. This one seems like like I don't I don't remember that one. I had plenty of that one and this one like a really cool moonscape. So I didn't get the Easter Easter Island head uh island, but I got some uh, valuable uh mountains. Some more cards. Ooh, look at this wall of text. Belduvian shaman for one blue summon cleric 1/1 one, one, art by Quentin Hoover, one of my favorite artists back in the day. Uh, let's see if we can get through this. Tap. Permanently change the text of target white enchantment you control that does not have cumulative upkeep by replacing all instances of one color word with another. For example, you may change counters black spells to counters blue spells. Belduvian Shaman cannot change mana symbols. That enchantment now has cumulative upkeep of one. Terrible, terrible card. So narrow. Gives you cumulative upkeep terrible. The only thing that saves it is this half-naked guy with his uh, monster skull doing his magic, art by Quentin Hoover. Ooh, Pyroblast. For one red, you get an interrupt, aka instant, counter target spell if it's blue, or destroy target permanent if it's blue. So some great counter spells from red. Just the thing for those pesky water mages, Jaya Ballard. Kaja Foglio. Really like her style. Really like this card. Word of Undoing. One blue. Return target creature to owner's hand. Return any white enchantments you own on that creature to your hand. So it's an unsummon with a little bit extra. It was in Urza's journals that I finally found the secret at the core of the summonings. Journal author unknown. Art by Christopher Rush. Dire Wolves. Love that art. Ron Spencer. Two and a green. You get a 2-2 creature. Gains banding if you control any planes. So banding is that other extinct mechanic where I can have creatures join up together to do more damage, to block more creatures and such. For example, I can make a band right here. If I'm blocking, I can put all of these three creatures together as a band. So you're attacking with your 4-4 four, four creature. I'm going to distribute uh, two points to this creature, one to here and one to here, and they all survive. The thing about banding is that I can distribute the damage. And when I attack, I can join together banded creatures plus one non-banded creature to sort of make a bigger creature. Cool mechanic, but it was kind of complicated, so it's extinct. 
but I really remember this card and I love it. Um, these little wolves in the back and this one coming right at you. Ooh, shatter. One and a red instant destroy target artifact. There's the poor Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz getting shattered. Art by Brian Wackwitz. Let the past be the past. Do not call up that which you cannot put down. Destroy that which destroyed us so long ago. Sorin Relic Bane, Soldevi Heretic. Ooh, Touch of Death. I never had this card back in the day. I love this. Melissa Benson Art, another cool artist from back in the day. This is two in a black, sorcery. Touch of Death deals one damage to target player, and you gain one life. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. What was yours is mine. Your land, your people, and now your life. Limdol the Necromancer. So uh, this set had a lot of these slow trips, which is you cast a spell and then next turn you draw a card. Get a little bit of card advantage over your opponent. So uh, deal one damage, gain one life, draw a card for three mana. Very cool art. Cloak of Confusion. Beautiful Margaret Organ Keen art. The thing about her is that she always had like a checkerboard pattern in most of her art. So this is a creature enchantment or an aura. One in a black. If target creature you control attacks and is not blocked, you may choose to have it deal no damage to defending player this turn. If you do so, that player discards a card at random from his or her hand. Ignore this ability if they don't have cards. So I, I liked putting this one on my creatures. Enchant my creature. Uh, it wasn't blocked. I then uh, deal no damage, but I have a person discard. I love the old uh, milling and discarding strategies from back in the day. Kill Doran Sky Knight. Two and a white for a 1-1 one, one creature with banding, flying, and first strike. This one's got it all. My Aster is my most trusted ally. We fight as one and live as one, and we will die as one. Arna Kennerud Sky Knight. Art by Mark Poole. Regeneration. This is a card that's been around for a long time up to this point. Here it is with the new art, Justin Hampton. One and a green. Enchant your creature. When regeneration comes into play, choose a target creature. Then uh, pay one green to regenerate the creature. So if a creature were to have lethal damage, you pay a green and it then uh, has all the damage nullified and it still lives. So my Aster, uh, my, my Sky Knight here, uh, I can keep it living, uh, blocking some big flying creatures. I just pay one green to regenerate. Faith in Freilis has given me the gift, not the curse, of unprecedented longevity. Lina of the Elvish Council. So Freilis was another name that popped up in the lore of this set. Oh, the Circle of Protection Red. The COPs were a way for white mages to defend themselves against damage. The only one that really mattered was red, because there's so much burn in red. So here with this enchantment, one and a white, all I have to do is pay one colorless mana to prevent all damage. So someone hits me with a fireball of 12 damage, I just pay one and negate it all. And any further damage I can also negate by one from a red source. Pete Venter's Art. Essence Filter. One and a green green. Sorcery. Destroy all enchantments or destroy all non-white enchantments. So again, this is in the classic color pie of nature uh, hating the unnatural. So all enchantments are gone or non-white enchantments. Freilis has cleansed our bodies and minds of the plagues of Keldor. All she asks in return is that we keep pure our newly given home in Findorn. Kolbjorn, Elder Druid of the Juniper Order. Illustration, Rick Emmond. Pestilence Rats, Summon Rats, Jeff A. Mengis Art. You get a something three rat, two and a black. Pestilence Rats has power equal to the total number of other rats in play, no matter who controls them. For example, as long as there are two other rats in play, this Pestilence Rat 
has power and toughness of 2-3. So based on how many other rats there are in play, this one could get pretty big. Perfect for your rat tribal deck. Sabertooth Tiger. 2 and a red for a 2-1 first strike. Daughter, it is now your turn to hunt the tiger and make a blanket of its fur. Lovisa Cold Eyes, Balduvian Chieftain. Art by Melissa Benson. Death Ward. One white, you get an instant regenerate target creature. Sometimes a soul is not ready to complete its journey to the next world. Halvor Aronson, Kildor and Priest. Now, real talk for a moment. This is amazing, beautiful art by a terrible, horrible person. Harold McNeil, known racist, used to create very cool magic art, but he is uh, completely a, you know, Ku Klux Klan person, racist and all of that. Don't buy any of his prints. Just letting you know. Battle Frenzy 2 and a red instant. All green creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. All non-green creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. So here's the affinity of green and red helping each other out. One day you too shall drink the blood of your foes. It is something to look forward to. Tooth Licker Harge, Orcish Captain. Art by Brian Snowdy. Here you get like a uh, really violent, cool scene. Big splash of blood, orc in a thong, this warrior woman just cutting through in a battle frenzy. <laughs> Speaking of orcs, orcish conscripts. For one red, you get a 2-2 two, two on your first turn. But what's the downside? Cannot be declared as attacking unless at least two other creatures are also declared as attacking. And cannot be assigned to block unless at least two other creatures are also assigned to block. So not worth it at all because you're not going to be able to attack or block unless you have two more creatures. But this creature is perfect for your goblin grenade. Gorilla pack. Two and a green. You get a gorilla pack. 3-3. Three, three. Gorilla Pack cannot attack if defending player controls no forests. Bury Gorilla Pack if you control no forests. Bury Gorilla Pack if you control no forests. So this is basically forest home. We learned this at a dear price. Once you cross the Great Rivers, get through the Yavimaya Forest at top speed. Disa the Restless Journal Entry. Art by Anthony Waters. There were a lot of cool Gorilla cards actually in... Ice Age and its follow-up set, Alliances. Ooh, nice. Dark Vanishing. Two and a black, instant. Bury target non-black creature, or destroy, that is, nowadays. So this is like a little bit more of an expensive fear. Well, not fear, terror. But it can target artifact creatures as well. Will not the mountains quake and hills melt at the coming of the darkness? Share this vision with your enemies, limb duel, and they shall wither. Leshrac, Walker of Night. Illustration, Drew Tucker. Essence Flare. Again, beautiful Richard Kane Ferguson art. So detailed. Uh, one blue. Enchant creature. Target creature gets plus two plus zero. During each of its controller's upkeeps, put a minus zero minus one counter on the creature. These counters remain even if Essence Flare is removed. Never underestimate the power of the Soul Unleashed. So you get a big boost of a plus two, but then the creature slowly dies. Oh, here's another McNeil art. Ray of Command. Three and a blue. Instant. Untap. Target creature. Opponent controls and gain control of it until end of turn. That creature can attack or use abilities that acquire tap. When you lose control of the creature, tap it. So uh, it's a classic hijack. A little more expensive, but in blue. Orkish Lumberjacks. I remember the art for this one. I never had it. For one red, you get summon orc. One, one. Tap. Sacrifice a forest to add three mana in any combination of red and or green to your mana pool. How did I ever let myself get talked into this? 
Toothlicker Harge, Orcish Captain. So he was quoted over here somewhere. Yeah, right here. So he was talking about the the blood of your foes, and then after that he's cutting trees. Art by Dan Fraser. Kildor and Wire. One white, summon hero. You get a 1-1 one, one with banding. So I can band it with these wolves. Where did that wolf? So if I've summoned that, I've got a planes. This has banding. These can attack as a band. Then I combine it with one more non-banded creature. Here I'm attacking with a 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, and 3-3 three, three all together. as a big old 6-6 six, six creature, sort of. And then I can assign the damage and uh, really go through my opponent. Cool art by Mark Poole. Give me a thousand such warriors and I could change the world. Avram Garrison, leader of the Knights of Stronghold. And the last card, Limdul's Cohorts. One, black black, summon zombies. Two, three, creatures blocking or blocked by Limdul's Cohort cannot regenerate this turn. Join me. In the place of power, you risen dead, join me where the waters weep and the trees have no hearts. Limdul the Necromancer. All right, so that's the unboxing. I'm going to look at um, what the rare and uncommons are, and we'll take a look at those. See if we got any sort of valuable... Oh, I missed this one, actually. Findorn Brownie. Two and a green, summon brownie. Then you do a two, a green, and a tap. Untap target creature. I've been insulted by drunks in a hundred inns, but never as skillfully or annoyingly as by those blasted brownies. Generally are killed, Arctic Fox, Richard Thomas, Art. So I'm going to check the rarity of these, and then we'll uh, talk about them. Getting all of these mixed up. Hmm, well, I didn't even notice this one, too. Barbarian Guides. Two and a red. Summon Barbarians. Uh, two and a red again and tap. Target creature you control gains a snow-covered land ability of your choice until end of turn. At end of turn, return that creature to its owner's hand. So if my opponent has any of these snow-covered lands, I can pay a huge casting cost and an activation ability on this Barbarian Guide and turn my uh, brownie into a snow-covered swamp walker to become unblockable. But then it comes back to my hand. So, pretty high bar. All right, everyone. So I separated all of the commons, uncommons, and rares. And let's talk about what I got in the valuable ones. So all of the commons are right here. Hyperion, Kildor, and Warrior. Death Ward, Circle of Protection, Red. Kildor and Sky Knight. Ray of Command. Essence Flare, Word of Undoing. Belduvin, Shaman. Limdul's Cohort, Dark Banishing. Pestilence Rat, Cloak of Confusion, Touch of Death. Barbarian Guides, Orcish Lumberjack, Orcish Conscripts, Battle Frenzy, Sabretooth Tiger, Shatter. This one kind of fell through the cracks my first time around. Wild Growth, Findorn Brownie, Dire Wolves, Gorilla Pack, and Regeneration. So the uncommon cards, nothing really stands out in value. But here are the uncommons. Justice, Dreams of the Dead. Leshrac's Rite, Word of Blasting, Essence Filter, Yavimaya Nats, Pit Trap, and War Chariot. Oh, and one more, uh, the Hymn of Rebirth. As for the rares, let's go in order of value. Stromgald Cabal, according to a price list at TCG Player, is a cool 23 cents. Flooded Woodlands can be had for 33 cents. And the most valuable rare here, the Musician at Near Mint for 48 cents. Not that impressive. But here's some interesting things. Pyroblast, a common card, is worth over a dollar. 
it's for sale at a dollar, a dollar twenty-three, a dollar forty-nine. So a common card worth more than the most valuable rare card. But wait a minute, let's also look at this. Regarding lands, we have planes. A couple of variants of planes. I didn't get all three or four, but then there were also snow covered planes. So regular lands are worth, you know, 20, 30 cents, but then the snow covered ones are worth 75 cents, a dollar, and more. So I got one snow covered planes. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any snow covered islands. Those are pretty valuable, actually, like a dollar 75. Got the regular islands, very nice islands, you know, 50 cents and such. Swamps, got the regular swamps, one, and then a bunch of snow covered swamps. These are about 75 cents each. Forests, I didn't get any snow covered forests, although I did get a variant forest that I never had back in the day. So 20 years ago, I had all of the lands except for the forest, and no snow-covered forest this time. Interestingly, the most valuable lands are the plains. Well, there's the uh, regular mountains, yeah, but the snow-covered mountains are super valuable. These are the ones you want to be on the lookout for. These are $2 each. I ended up getting two of them, snow-covered mountain. So in the world of Ice Age, these snow-covered lands are worth the most. They don't really do anything anymore, but people want them, I guess. And uh, I got two of them this time. The land collation was really weird. I got four forests and uh, four swamps and uh, five islands only three plains, and then six mountains. Well, two of them are, I mean, not, there's another five there, sorry. Uh, five, no, actually, yeah, six. Uh, six whole uh, mountains. So one of them should have been the snow-covered plain over there, but that's kind of weird. So uh, this is this is it here. This is the set of Ice Age, like my favorite set from my youth. I loved these cards. I had most of these. I did get a few this time that I never had back in the day. Leshrax Wright, Stromgald, Cabal, and such. But I had these. I played with them. I, I tried to work with uh, Cumulative Upkeep. I tried to play with this card. And if you see these old cards, they either go from very powerful to to very overcosted. It's just really interesting how the game has evolved. So here's an example for one red mana. That's a counter spell. Red doesn't quite have that anymore, like that. And here's one uh, another another color hate card. So it was really cool looking at these classic cards. Hopefully, if you or uh, of an old timer like me, you got a lot of memories. If you were uh, newer to the game, check out how things used to be. Thanks for taking a trip down memory lane with me. There are more of these videos coming up uh, because back in the day, my time was 4th edition, Ice Age, Mirage, and 5th edition. Be on the lookout for those videos and more magic and comic book and technology videos in my channel. So don't forget to subscribe, get your notifications, and I'll see you in the pit trap. This has been VM Campos.